Alrighty, so today we're gonna do a little bit of range testing with the Mini 3 Pro. There's been a lot of talk around the range and whether or not there's a signal strength issue with this quad. So I figured we'll test it. We're out here by the water and boy is it windy. Now, of course, I'm just joking. You should always follow along with the FAA regulations. It's just good humor to talk about that. But no, really, when we do do range testing, the thing that people overlook the most is calibration. It's really important to calibrate your pupils. And the first thing I like to do anytime I do a range test is calibrate my pupils. And basically, I like to use one of these. Now, this is the Dobo calibration chart, and it's going to allow me to effectively calibrate my eyes for long range. I like to start at the top and work my way down to the bottom. And um, Jimmy, tell me what's on line six. Quickly, quickly, Jimmy. Is that an F or a D? Nope, you didn't get it. I knew it was an F. So down here, way below the green line, below that red line, that is the mini line. That's the mini three line. If you can see past here, you should be able to do a range test with the mini three. So I'm just gonna quickly calibrate my eyes before I fly, and then we'll go ahead and do a quick range test. F, E, E, no, that's a C, I'm sorry, shit, that's a C. G, no, the other one, that, that's an, yep, that's an F. Oh, it's not an F? All right, good enough, close enough calibration. Good to go. Let's just see it, can we see it? Yeah, we can see it. And, uh. I'm filming in 24 frames per second, so we don't accidentally cause this to overheat. And uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and begin our flight. So I am sitting in the vehicle right now. So if you are curious of why it looks weird, that is because we're sitting in the car and um, well, it's, it's just hotter than a Dickens. So let's leave the height at uh, 34 feet. So we're at a distance of 600 feet so far and the RC quality looks pretty good. So the goal with this test is not to push it out to uh, a distance of, of uncontrollable volume. The, the goal behind this is to more or less just showcase the fact that range is actually pretty adequate for the size. So right now we're at about 1200 feet. Again, I am sitting in the vehicle here. Um, and I'm at a 31 feet, 33 feet. Now we're out here over the water, which over the water, usually these tests are a little bit tougher to perform because you're, you know, you're out here, water, you have obstacles in your way. Like I'm going right now behind this uh, island here, which I can still see the drone, mind you, passing by the treacherous birds. We're at about 2,200 feet now. Again, 72 feet right now I'm at. Um, not increasing the altitude at all. I'm not gonna increase altitude unless I absolutely need it, but we're at 73 feet, which I feel is pretty safe. Um, so we're just still flying along. So right now we're getting a weak signal on the RC. So now I'm gonna go ahead and increase the altitude to about 100 feet or so, which right away, just increasing to about 120 feet has improved my altitude. So I'm at 3,000 feet. Now a normal human trying to find a Mini 3 at 3,000 feet would probably have a hard time. But again, if you were one of the far and few between children whom was able to ingest the Flintstone vitamin, you'll know that you benefit from enhanced vision. So I can still see it, it's, a, it's an absolute spec. Now, some of you will say, well, Dobo, you're full of shit. It's out 3,800 feet. There's no way you can see it. Listen, listen, I can see it. I can see it. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm physically seeing it. I'm one with the drone. I'm watching it fly like a little butterfly floating in the wind. And it's a little bit windy out. Now, we're still just cruising along. Now, there's this beach out here in the distance, and I think that beach is going to be our metric point. You can see the RC strength is weakening in a little bit, but again, 4,600 feet will increase to about 170 feet. Again, directionally, I am pointing the antennas directionally towards the island in which I am still flying towards. Now, this is a beach. I am still flying. We're at 5,000 feet, which I think 5,000 feet is, is, is really acceptable 
range for this craft. It's small, it's tiny. RC strength has weakened. And now we're gonna take it up to about, I don't know, we'll take it to like 270. So we're looking, RC signal strength is still showing that we have two bars, so it's breaking up right there. So right at about uh, two, uh, I wanna say 5,700 feet. Now I'm stepping out of the vehicle, and now as I step out of the vehicle, I have full RC bars at 5,700 feet. So I feel pretty good about that. So I can now orbit around this island a little bit. And again, I'm at 283 feet, 50, 5,800 feet out there. It's looking pretty good. It is windy though. My goodness, it's windy. I'm at 72% battery, 6,000 feet in distance. I mean, this is acceptable. Do you need much more range than this? I don't think you do. I mean, this is further than I am willing to walk if I had to land this on my own accord. Like right now, if I had to land this, I would not want to walk out here. I couldn't walk, I would have to drive. I would have to land it, ninja land it on somebody's property, sneak onto the property, retrieve my craft. I'm at 298 feet now. I can see it, my God, it's so tiny. It's like a speck out there. It's like a speck. And again, if it goes down, it's, it's, it, the worst that's gonna happen, it, it'll smack a Florida walrus. Have you ever seen a Florida walrus? These behemoth, they wear, um, oh, that's terrible. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But anyways, we have Florida walrus. If you know, you know. If you don't, I can't, I can't tell you what a Florida walrus is. Um, some of them have more teeth than others but um, it's a weird thing. But anyways, this is 7,600 feet. We're still cooking along here, 64% battery. I mean, this is pretty good. This is beautiful. I'm flying backwards so I can still wave to myself and see my positioning. And um, I'm thinking 8,000 feet is an acceptable range. Yeah, there we go, 8,000 feet. And again, yeah, we're, we're over water. Signal travels different over water. So we'll go ahead and bring it back in. We'll head towards this island. We're not getting a crazy amount of speed coming back in. 20 miles, that's reasonable. Now, once again, we did have some signal drops as we were heading out to the island, which caused us to have to increase our altitude. Most of that is really in part to the fact that I was sitting inside of a vehicle as, uh, as I was filming this because it's hotter than the Dickens and my balls balls had sweat dripping down them it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. But I feel like the range is pretty good. I think that the people that are out there calling it a fail have to remember that range is always going to be subjective to your individual location, your individual market, uh, whether you're flying in urban environments, are you via city, what's the weather like where you're at? Do you have a good credit score? These are all things that will affect your range. And right now, you know, this is a seven minute flight. It's taking a little bit to come back in. I'm not sweating it. I have 57% of battery, but 8,000 feet, I think is an acceptable amount of range to do in this test. Could we have pushed it further? Absolutely. Do I trust the battery to go that far? I don't know. Do I want to listen to all the, the legal eagles complain about me flying that far? I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't have patience for that. Um, Go fuck yourself. Um, I mean, this will be great, just you know, 8,000 feet. It's just enough to show you that, hey, you can fly if you put your mind to it. Now I can start bringing down my altitude as I'm getting closer um, to the area in which we were just departing. I'm bringing it back down. Um, I'm at about 170 feet now. And uh, I feel like that's fine. Still have full RC strength. Again, my RC is pointed in the direction that I'm flying, I'm gonna turn around now, you can't see it, but I'm turning around and you can see immediately that RC signal drops. So I'm now facing the other way. I'm gonna turn back around again. And you can see, you can very, very quickly see that just by turning around, the RC signal strength will be affected. So keep that in mind that if you are flying, it's very directional. If you're an absolutely complete idiot, 
and you want to fly this with your back turned to the drone, expect to have disconnects. But if you follow my simple method, which is facing the drone, keeping it in a relatively safe line of sight, you can get maximum range. If you're finding that you're prematurely disconnecting, you should probably consult a doctor. But as, as for such, I am very, very happy with this. I can see it, it's coming back in the blue sky that basically washes out all gray things flying. I can still see it because of my Flintstone vitamins. Again, if you wanna get your chance to get a calibration chart, I'll have a link in the description. Calibrate your eyes before you fly. I'm telling you, it does absolute wonders to where you will be able to fly at a distance. You'll be able to go the distance. I mean, quite frankly, you'll never hear her complain about your vision ever again. It's, it's, it's really, if you are struggling in your marriage, a calibration chart for your eyes will go a long way. All right, we've almost reached back to our destination. We're coming back. Our journey here by the water is almost done. This was thrilling. This is thrilling. I can, you can see me, I'm in the white shirt, so obviously. Um, so let me go ahead, bring it back in. There you are, hey, I'm gonna wave, I'm just waving. I'm doing that thing, I'm gonna do a flyby. I'm waving. Alrighty, so that's gonna do it for this test. Now, range-wise, I know we could have pushed it so much further and, and you know, no matter what I do, whether I go super far or I don't go far or I try to follow the rules, Somebody is always going to complain, so I can't please everybody. But what I did want to do is try to keep this as safe as possible. Like I said, the only thing I would, would have probably hit was a Florida walrus. And I mean, honestly, it would have bounced right off of them. I mean, it just would have. Let's just face it, you're not gonna, they're impenetrable. Um, I think this is good, but as you can see, it's very directional. These antennas are super directional. As you saw from the test, as I turned around, the signal strength dropped. As I went back the other way, the signal strength made sense. So, you know, there are going to be antenna adapters available for these. You can always put some omnidirectional antennas on here, but I think if you want something super portable and as long as you can keep the drone and the signal, you know, facing your direction of your aircraft, I think you're going to be just fine. But honestly, very impressed with this, you know, 8,000 feet for something this small is, is probably further than any one little individual should ever you know, push forward. Again, for the guys that have that better than average vision, I mean, you're safe, but for, for, for everybody else, the vast majority of you, don't do it. Stay original. Back of my head, the thoughts killing me. I don't have a second to spare, well, not willingly. Way too much effort in people who not feeling me. Equivalent of burning myself with hot spilling tea. I'm talking like Jerry, man, what you gonna do? I need a pick up, like half court, two on twos. Guess it's just another obstacle I move on through. While I'm looking at the runway that I flew on to.